Hello everyone, welcome to episode 43 of the Cherry Heart Crochet Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a podcast about crochet, knitting, sewing and making of all sorts really. You can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll pop a link uh, in the down bar below so you can find that nice and easily. And you can find me on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and elsewhere on the web as Cherry Heart. Oh yes, and there's also a Ravelry group which is Cherry Heart's Cozy Corner. So you can just search for that in the groups tab and um, you can share projects there and just chat out, ask questions, enter giveaways and so on and so forth. Um, so shall we begin? It feels like it's been a long time again, because it has, I think. Um, February's been really busy, busy month, uh, mostly in a good way. Oh, excuse me, I have a cat asking for entry. Sorry about that. I have Stanley come to visit with me today. And causing disruption. Uh, yes, so he's gone to settle himself down on my little... Um, chair that I have in here so hopefully he won't be disturbing us anymore. Um, anyway where was I? Oh yes busy, been busy but with lots and lots of um, good exciting things so I shall fill you in with that as we go along I think. But um, I've got quite a lot of things to share, quite a lot of incoming goodies that have come my way just lately so there's quite a few of those to share um, but I'm not sure how much Crafty makes I have to show you. I've got a few, but um, it was half term and I was sort of, um, I kind of used that time to crack on with some commission work that I have going on at the moment. So I've got some secret squirrel stuff that I can't really share. So um, but I'll show you what I do have. Um, oh, I'll just share what I'm wearing because we're having a bit of the. Uh, Arctic blast visiting us here in the UK at the moment. Um, I've wrapped up in my um, it's my quite contrary shawl, which I haven't had out for a while. Um, yeah, made this one years ago. In it was a Rowan merino. I think it might have been like a cash merino, but a Rowan version. But it was discontinued years ago. But yeah, so I quite like the nice pale peach colour. Peach, peach, pinky peach colour and you know, it's one of those with my favourite dangly bits on. So I thought I'd drag this out for a bit of a wear because it hadn't seen the light of day for a little while. And it's quite nice and cosy around the old shoulders when it's freezing outside. We've got a bit of snow, we have a little, a light dusting. It's quite a nice amount, sort of enough to make it look pretty but not enough to be, you know, stopping anyone going anywhere or doing anything. So. That's enough, just leave that now. No more snow now, that will be fine, thank you. Um, but we'll see, because more is forecast. Anyway, let me jump into what I have actually made, um, which is my cute animals. So first up, oh, I didn't bring the book up to show you. First up is this one. So this is Emily Bunny. Now all of these are from the book Cute Crocheted Animals, which is by Emma Varnum. And I'll pop a little picture in here. I showed it last time. So I've made her. Um, she was she started out being for me, but she has ended up being uh, half inched by my little girl. Little Miss sort of came along and said. I would quite like one actually. I said I thought you might end up wanting one. She said yeah, I should. I could have that one, couldn't I? I was like, yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> so this one's ended up being for her. So she started uh, taking over from the uh, clothing choices. So she's got her original dress on, but we've added the detail at the bottom here. And she wanted a cardigan, not the coat. So, um, the cardigan, there's a pattern for something similar in the book, but it ha 
it was in a different weight yarn and I didn't have anything. She wanted this colour, which I didn't have in the four ply or whatever it was the pattern asked for. I think it was four ply. So I kind of had to make this up a little bit based on another one of the patterns in the book. But that came out quite well and I really like her little buttons look. And the hat came with the Emily Bunny. So my little one specified the colours of that as well. So she's a bit of a mishmash if you ask me. Welly boots had to be white for some reason. Don't argue, just do. And her face, I'm not in love with her face. It's okay, but I think her eyes are just a smidge too close together. And they're a little bit big for my liking. She just looks a bit... I think she could be cuter. Don't let's not tell her, but I think she could be a little bit cuter. And I didn't do her head very well. She's a bit flat headed at the back. She could have done with some more sort of stuffing in. I sort of I stuffed it and then I forgot to sort of top up the stuffing before I actually closed the head all up. So yeah. And then the scarf is the clown, crowning glory of this because my daughter made this all on her own. So she chose the colours and she hooked it all up and she even wove in the ends. She kind of didn't want to, <laughs> she wanted me to do it for her. She did about two and then went, can you do the rest? I was like, well, not really. <laughs> I thought, start as you mean to go on. So yeah, so she did sit, um, she didn't do it that day, but another day she came back to it and uh, she did sit and weave all the ends in. So yeah, hopefully uh, that'll mean, you know, I've set myself up nicely there for the future that if she makes anything else she'll accept she'll have to weave the ends in herself. So she wasn't quite so neat when she wove the pom-pom ends in. We should have done the strings in coordinating colours for the end of the scarves, but we didn't think of that. But overall, I think she uh, did a really good job. It's really neat. So yeah, well done little one. So that's that one that she has now commandeered. And then we went to my sister's house for hubby's birthday, which is always a treat because my sister makes yum yummy food. And I'd taken along my animals and I was... Uh, stitching up whichever part of a bunny I was stitching up at the time so I had the book there and then my niece came hopping along she's like oh let me have a look what's all this what's all this about anyway and she was taken with Lucy the mouse she was obsessed with the fact that it had its pants because they've got their little knickers kind of part of their body oh, look look at its tail as well love the tail detail yeah, so its pants are worked in as part of its body. She was obsessed by that idea. She wanted the mouse in the pants. <laughs> she wasn't really that fussed about the other clothes, to be fair. Oh, but then she decided it should have its little headband, because the... I'll put a picture in, actually, so you can see. So the mouse is dressed up like a ballerina, so it's got a little headband and cute little ballerina shoes. Yeah. So she wanted the shoes and she wanted the headband and she wanted it in its pants. But I did make a dress as well because <laughs> it didn't seem right sending it out into a world in the all together with just its pants on, poor thing. So yeah, and also I kind of wanted to do that thrilly, frilly bit at the bottom. I kind of wanted to see how that worked out. So that was just sort of fun to see how that was constructed. So that was good. So that whipped up in no time. So that one's gone off to its new home now, so I can't show you it here in the flesh. Uh, as soon as it was finished, she was quite impatient. She was very excited about getting it. So uh, we sent it off to her quite quickly. And then finally, I was able to start on one for me. So this is Jack Rabbit. And I think, see, I stuffed his head a bit better. He's got a bit better shape to his head. Mm. And I just think I've got a slightly smaller eye and I spaced them just a bit better. So I just think he looks just a little bit cuter. I do think he did come out a little bit better. That's the thing with faces, they're the most difficult bit, they always worry me, because I'm not very good at them. 
So yeah, turns out second time round is a lot better. So look, he's got his little trousers on with a little hole for his tail to stick out and he's got his t-shirt with his star which is uh, worked in like, what is that? Cro Tapestry crochet, is that where you change colours? So that worked out quite nicely, quite pleased with that and he's got his cute little hat with a red pom-pom and all he needs now is his duffel coat so I've made the coat, the front and the back and the sleeves and then I run out of yarn so I just need a bit more so I can put his hood on and then he'll have his toggles added and then he'll all be complete so he's probably going to sit up there Whoop. on that shelf back there but I think he needs a little companion, I wanted a boy and a girl so I might do the pussycat to be his companion I'm not sure what she's called and I think my daughter's got an eye a little eye on a pussycat as well I think she quite fancies one in uh, colours to match our Stanley so black and white so yeah <laughs> which is uh, funny actually because the boy cat in Emma's book is also called Stanley after her black and white cat which is also called Stanley so that's kind of fitting isn't it so yeah I'll perhaps have a little break before I make any more little creatures though but I have to say these are by far the nicest ones I've ever made I think they're just a little bit the construction of them the way they're made it's just a little bit easier than they normally are because normally there's quite a few bits to make and then a lot of sewing them all together which is all a little bit fiddlier but I just found these ones come together quite a bit quicker the clothes require a little bit more effort but I don't know they just they work so well and they look so cute it's kind of worth it and I also I'm finding say again normally I'm thinking when I make these animals all these little bits and all the sewing it's all makes it seem like a very long or a lot of work for quite a small project but now I'm making these ones I'm thinking of more each little bit is kind of like an individual little thing oh I can make a couple of legs now they don't take long I can whip them out that's done and then later I might oh I can whip up the head now that's done and it sort of feels almost like each little bit is like a little project like oh I've done the trousers tonight that's a little project I completed so yeah somehow that feels more satisfying so I've been quite enjoying it from that point of view so that's all I've actually got done and finished I can show you um, I've started something new which is a little buried bear with me and I'll get it out so this is in my So Sweet Violet happy 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 book and it's a cowl and I've just gone for a very simple, I tried various different patterns because I wanted something other than just simple grannies so I tried various different bits and bobs all of which are quite nice this was the first one I tried, I do quite like that actually but I didn't go for it in the end this one, I really like this as well but I think for another project maybe yeah so those are my little samples and I couldn't really settle on anything but in the end because I had all these other things going on I thought I'm just gonna go for simple grannies I can't be bothered to think about anything else so that's what I've done now it's quite long because I've based it on another cowl that I've got that is quite long and you loop round but it's um, <clears throat> when you loop it round it just gets so cosy because you've got quite a few layers then and it just makes it really lovely and cosy so it'll be mm, nice um, yeah so all of these except one that I've got on here so far are from my Nora George advent calendar minis oh so pretty kind of like easter eggy easter spring colours isn't it actually and this top one here, this is actually a bit of hedgehog fibres, which is one of my favourites. 
I saw it pop in. So I'm working my way. My idea was to just use my Nora George um, Advent Calendar Minis and just work through those because I put some in my blanket, my Battenberg blanket, which is the sort of um, checkerboardy one with the multicoloured squares alternating with the white squares. So um, when I open the Advent Calendar, I would open that one that day's yarn and wind it up and make some squares and then wait till the next day and do some more so that was really nice so I thought I'd do it my initial idea was to do something similar with this was to take one and do a row and then pick out a next one and do another row another day but I couldn't be that restrained in the end so I'm just sort of putting a few rows on as and when I see fit but anyway as I work through it and it's turning out this lovely sort of really pale pastel -y colours there's a couple of the Nora George ones that are actually a bit brighter, but they're only... Ooh. I'm chucking my balls everywhere. There are only really these ones that are really bright. The others, I think, are all sort of will merge quite well with what I've got already. So I might leave those four bright ones out and I'm just bringing a couple of other ones in. So this hedgehog fibre is one I've brought in. I might just bring a couple of others in to pad it out as well. I've got a couple of Anna Boo's house ones that are just really, really pretty. I thought would fit in with that beautifully. So that's these are by Sarah of Anna Boo's house, and hers are really lovely because she dyes with just all natural dyes. Look at that one, just it's so subtle but it's so beautiful. Little peaches and yellows and sort of aqua blue in there. Focusing brilliantly, is it? So pretty. Yeah, so I thought they would sit well with it, so I will pop those in as well, I think. Um yes, so it's gonna be quite a bit taller than this. I don't know quite how tall I think I'll keep going for a bit and then I'll just loop it around and see if it feels about right and when it feels about right that'll be enough and I'll stop but it's just one of those perfect mindless ones to have on the go to pick up in between other things and I feel like I've got quite a lot on the go at the moment it's not quite as bad as it was I've got it down a little bit but it's kind of you know, I'm not one of those that can have a lot of projects on the go. It doesn't sit well with me. It makes me... Eek. I like to be able to do something and see progress on it. And so if I have too many, I don't see enough progress. And it just makes me feel all out of sorts because there's too much going on in my brain. And I feel like I'm neglecting things and all such daftness like that. But anyway, I'm getting there a little bit, so now I've got my animals done, I've got that one on the go. I've got my socks on the go, which I showed you last time, but they haven't really changed appreciably, I don't think. Anyway, they're not remotely finished yet, so they're still sort of pootling along in the background. And what else have I got on the go? This embroidery that I'm about to show you now. Oh, on my Battenberg blanket, of course. Got a few pattern things on the go, so... It's making my mind feel full. I just need a few more things ticked off before I feel comfortable, I think. So, this is my embroidery project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, because I don't really do an awful lot of embroidery. I've never really sort of been that... Well, I've never really done it much. I was going to say I've never really been any good at it. But to be fair, if you don't do something, you're not going to be great at it, are you? But I quite like the idea of it and I quite like to sort of be a little bit better at it. I'm not saying I'd want to do it all the time, but, you know, just so I don't make a complete dog's dinner when I did something would be nice. Anyway, all of that to say um, that I am making myself a good intentions hoop. So this is what I've got so far. So last time I just had the fabric and the letters in the middle, that's as far as I had got. 
Um, so I'm following along with um, the Good Intentions Stitch Along, so Good Intentions S-A-L, which is full stitch along, and that's by Chrissy Crafts. Uh, she's on YouTube, she's got a YouTube channel. So she's doing a series of video tutorials to take us through making these hoops. So it started off with the materials you needed, the hoop and the fabric, and how to get the words on there and stitching the words. And then she did the couching stitch, which is how I made these kind of rings around. So these are supposed to resemble like um, kind of like a willow twigs like wrapped around into a reef. I'm not sure how well I've done that, but it's okay. I think it's okay. And then we've just started to put these little leaves on, which are fly stitch. I like those. I like the fly stitch. That was quite easy to make it look quite good, so I liked that. And then next we'll be adding some flowers on. Yeah, so that's really fun. And it's... Um, it's quite nice that it's a sort of a small and manageable little thing and just doing a little bit a little bit here and there. I quite like the pace of it. So um yeah, so this is my good intention for this year is to just try and slow down and take things one step at a time instead of trying to do everything all at once like a mad person. Do one thing and then move on to the next thing so I'm stitching it in a hoop to remind myself that that is what I want to achieve this year so I should put that over there so I think that's all I have to show you project wise so next up is pips which is my patterns in progress um, so what have I been doing there? Yeah, quite a few things to tell you about there actually because I've been going back and doing something I've been meaning to do for a couple of years now actually, um, which is sort of just looking back and sort of tidying up a few bits in some of the older patterns and also for my free, I've got quite a few free blanket patterns, but I wanted to get them written up. So there's a lot of them, the information is there either on the blog or I've got a tutorial for various different bits, but I wanted to get them sort of as, um, I wanted to get the written pattern up, so a written version in a downloadable PDF, so just to make it easier for you guys to work from, so you had all the information in one place. So obviously I'll keep all the links to the tutorials or anything that might be helpful, but yeah, I just thought it'd be easier to have all the information on one file really. So I've been doing that for some of my free patterns. So the first one, which I talked about last week actually, is the giant granny patches, which I'll just show you a picture of. Did it come from this way or did it come from this way? Wherever, this one. Um, so I spoke about this last week because Black Sheep Wools have released a yarn pack for that. So if you want all the colours for that, you can pop along to Black Sheep Wools and I'll pop a link in the show notes for you. Um, so that's available and I've got everything for the pattern written out now, so the written pattern and all like the colour suite sequence and everything so you can um, make it exactly like that if you want to or you know just use the pack in your own way if you prefer. So that's available. So I released it as I said, speaking about it before in UK terms, but I've also released it in US terms now, which is something I'm sort of starting to go back to do with some of my patterns. Um, I know a lot of people just don't mind, they can work from either and they just can convert it fine, because the whole UK, US terms thing is just a bit of a fact of life in the crochet pattern world, so I guess most of us are used to working around it. But I just thought it'd be nice because if you are particularly used to working a certain way, just sometimes it's so much easier not to have to keep thinking about it. So yeah, so there is a US version of that one out. And I've also released US versions for a few other of my patterns. So my peekaboo blanket, um, that's another one that's been out for a little while, which looks like this. Um, that's available in US terms now, so that's, if you've already purchased a pattern, 
and I release it in US terms, you don't have to buy it again or anything like that. You can just pop back to the download link or your Ravelry library and um, you can have a choice of either file. So if you prefer working from one or the other, you can just pop and download it. So the Peekaboo blanket. I've also got a US terms version for the Spicier Life blanket now. Um, so that's the crochet along that I did last year, also with black sheep wools. So the complete file, so all the parts are all together in one file now, which you can download for free still. Um, that's on Ravelry. Um, so I've done a US version of that. So if you're used to working from US terms um, and you would prefer a copy in that, that's available now. And last of all is my barley wrap which is this one. Um, again, it's been available for a little while, but it is available in US terms now. So if you're wanting to make it in US terms or you prefer to work from those, you can either get it now if that was putting you off before, or you can just download the US version if you've already bought it and just prefer to work from US terms. So that's those ones. And then one other thing, no, two other things. So there is another free pattern, which is my giant granny patches blanket, which is, as it's just really quite a giant blanket, but it's made out of small granny squares, just um, three round granny squares. Um, yeah, so I've written up a PDF, I've written up the pattern for that basically and put that in a PDF file. So it also includes a complete layout of the blanket, which hasn't been available before. It's sort of, I had a, the way I make my granite squares and also had a tutorial for the border. But I've actually written it up as a pattern and included all the colour placement. Um, so that is now available as a downloadable PDF and I did that in UK and US terms. So that's nice and easy as well. And then last of all, this one's a paid for pattern, but this is my painted roses blanket, which I could have brought up actually. So this is the original. This was a baby blanket. So as you see, it's quite small. Um, yeah, so the pattern for this one has been out for quite a while. And um, these flowers, it was inspired. The reason it's called Painted Roses is it because it reminds me of the flowers that you sort of get, you know those colourful paintings that you get on canal boats and things? It reminds me of those sorts of flowers. Yeah, so um, what have I updated on this pattern? So I've added charts to it. So if you like working from charts, there is a chart for the square and for the border. So you can make the whole thing from charts now if you want to. Um, I've also added, done a version with the US terms, so if you prefer working from those, that's available now. And again, if you've purchased it before and you just want to download the US terms version, that's absolutely fine, you can do that, you don't have to pay any more. And I've also included, I remade this blanket in a much bigger size, um, which I called my faded painted roses, which look like this and what I've done is I've included all the instructions so that you could make that version as well so all the colours that I used excuse me my other visitor has come <laughs> hello you there we are we have a visitor I've got both the animals up with me today that's unusual yes isn't it you don't both normally come up do you um, yeah, so where was I? Faded Painted Roses Blanket. Yeah, so I've included all the colours I use, but I've also listed out the colourway for each square, so that I think they're pretty much all unique, or almost all unique. So I've listed out the colours I use for each square and how I've laid them out on the blanket, so that's the sort of supplement to the original version, so that you could make either version if you want. So that's available now as well. So I've been quite a busy bee. I'm quite pleased with myself. Or at least it's good to have those checked off the list because I've been wanting to update some of those for so long. So it's nice to get round to it at last. Yeah, so I hope you'll find that useful. So I'll pop a list of all of those and just the little pictures and everything 
I'll just pop that on the show notes so that if the was one that occurred to you that might be of interest you can just pop along there and see them all in case you can't remember everything I just told you it's quite a lot of information in one go wasn't it uh, yeah so that's that section done um, and now I've just got my incoming goodies to share with you yes are you excited about incoming goodies are you me too I had a day with my friend Sam, who is uh, the lovely, talented lady behind Betsy Mix. Um, she invited me round for a little go, to, for a little dabble with yarn dyeing. Now I've been thinking of having a little go, just for the fun really of it, just for a bit of colour experimentation, just to sort of I don't know. I just kind of fancied a go at it. I think it's just the colour play aspect of it that really appeals to me. But I don't know. <laughs> it could potentially be sort of, you know, you've got to buy the stuff, haven't you, to have a go. So I wasn't really sure. But anyway, she said, why don't you come round to have a little play and see what you think? I was like, well, can I? That would be good. Yeah, so we got together and we had a little play. Oh, that was so much fun. So I'll just quickly run through and show you what I've created. I suppose this is another done, really, isn't it? It's a done little project. I could have put this in the done section. But I've put it in incoming goodies. Right, so first up was this one. Um, I was having a little go at speckling here. And I can't say it went entirely to plan. We tried putting this... A light grey that was called and I sprinkled it on but of course because I put it on neat it went way too dark <laughs> so that was a bit of a disaster but then Sam said well why don't you add some pink so we tried adding some pink and I think that kind of saved it a bit actually so yeah it's not particularly my favorite because it's quite dark and that's not my thing but actually it's not too bad so this one because Finding the names is like half the fun. This is, I think I called it blackberry picking. <laughs> um, so after that one, there was a little bit of pink dye left. So I popped this into it and it started off as a nice subtle pink. You can just sort of see some under there. And then I thought I'll sprinkle some yellow on it, which I did, but I was a bit heavy handed. <laughs> So it's gone really quite yellow, but actually I really quite like that. It's kind of like a really nice mustardy, I don't know, like a sort of really variegated semi-solid. I quite like that. So that one turned out quite nicely. Then I tried a little sort of peach and aqua number. Again, came out quite bright. That's okay. Oh, so this one is called... Thank Crunchy It's Friday, because it reminds me of the inside of Crunchy Bubbles. <laughs> this one is called Nemo's House. Because the orange reminds me of Nemo. And the aqua is the sea. So that's okay. I think that, I'm not sure how that would knit up. It might be a bit too, a bit too patchy for me. But we shall see. Then I did this one. This one I really quite like. This was sort of a happy accident really. Started off with just blues and pinks and then I seem to be obsessed with yellow because I wanted to put yellow in this one as well. So a bit of yellow went in there and it kind of made some nice rainbowy patches. So yeah that kind of came out quite cute. Can't remember what I called this one. had some brilliant name for it <laughs> but I can't remember and then last of all I played it safe with a kind of pinky one now this was supposed to be peachy and pinky but it kind of blended a bit more than I intended but again it's just a really lovely pink colour and it's got a kind of nice variegated quality to it that I quite like I really like that you know even though it's one colour it's not solid I really like that. Yeah, so I'm quite pleased overall. Obviously, 
there was a lot of accidental stuff happening there rather than intentional stuff but for a first go not bad and I think from what I can gather from what people say going in with a you know not necessarily having your heart set on what the outcome might be is ne not necessarily a bad thing so they're fun so I, I might pop some of those in my blanket as well and then while we were there Sam said what do you think of this colour look at that isn't that gorgeous oh I really love it so I was thinking this would make a lovely version of Oh, what is that shawl called? It's by the Crochet Project. I'll pop it down here. It's like about trellises. Yeah, I thought that would look really nice with that. So I said, well, I'm thinking of making that. But I think it looked really nice with the grey with it. So Sam dyed up that while I was there to go with it. Look at those two together. Don't they look fab? Love that. So I think, I guess, these will be coming to her shop very soon. I shall have to ask her when so I can pop it in the show notes for you. But yeah, keep an eye. Pop over and have a look. See when she's next doing an update. So keep an eye for those. Because I think they look so gorgeous together. So my question is, if I make that shawl, I'll pop a picture in here so you can see. If I make that shawl... Should this be the middle bit and this is the border? Or should this be the middle and this is the border? Which way round do I do it? What do you think? I can't decide. Originally I thought this would be the middle and this would be the border. But then I thought, actually it might be quite nice to make that sing as the border and this just be the middle. I don't know. I really don't know what to do now. Well, this feels... So squidgy and lovely. This is on her little smile base, which is merino, but it's got some silk in there as well. So you can see how it's got that really nice kind of sheen on it. It drapes beautifully for shawls. So yeah, exciting, exciting, exciting. So yeah, let me know what you think about that because I can't decide. I need to have a poll, <laughs> canvas your opinion. Um, so that was a fun activity. And I came back and I really, really did fancy getting some stuff and having a go at dyeing. I think the only thing that's kind of holding me back now is where on earth I would put it all. <laughs> so I've not exactly got an overabundance of space where I could store some more stuff. So, yeah, but it was fun to dabble. So if you ever get the chance to just have a little bit of a go, I'd recommend having a play. It's fun. Anyway, so then after that, um, I went to Unravel. So met up with some lovely friends there, uh, Sarah from Annaboo's House, uh, Chrissy from Chrissy's Class, and Shana from Sweet Shana. So that was really nice, and we met some other people as we were going around and about as well. So yeah, I've not been to Unravel before. It's the one in Farnham, the Maltins, and it was a really, really lovely festival. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really... The building it means... The way the building is laid out means that you've sort of got quite a few different rooms. So you've got the stalls spread out in sort of different rooms. And it's just... It's got a really nice feel to it. I think because you're not all in one hall and all sort of crammed in one place, it kind of spreads things out a bit and makes it feel a bit nicer to sort of walk around. But yeah, there were some fantastic stalls there. So let me show you what I got. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see it? So I went in and I was very good at first. <laughs> and I walked around about four of the rooms and thought, oh, that's nice, that's nice, maybe I'll come back from that. Playing it very cool I was, just clocking things, seeing what I liked, not actually buying anything. Not really my style. <laughs> And then I got to the fifth room and I got to Skein, Queen's Stool, and 
I could have just grabbed armfuls of the stuff and run out actually. She just had so many nice ones. But in the end, I plumped for this one. And the reason it kind of broke me in the end was she only had two left and I thought if I leave it too long and go back, this might not actually be there. So this is called Sledging Day. And it's, I think Linga is the base. So it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. It's got a nice high twist to it, which you might be able to see there. And I just love the subtleness of some of these colours coming in. Love it. Yeah, so since she only had two, I thought, well, I'd better just get that. And then once I've started. So in the same room as the gorgeous Skein Queen's yarn. So many good ones. It was also fine fish yarns. And I got this one there. Again, lots of lovely colourways. I have got a couple of hers though, so. And she had her cute little bubba there. He's fast asleep. <laughs> yeah, so this is 24 hour party people. Great name. On her core sock. That's another 75-25 superwash merino nylon. So this will probably just be socks because it's gorgeous. And I think it'll work up beautifully for socks. Don't know about this one. It might be socks, it might be something else. Look at it. Oh, sorry. Can't get over it. And then after that, I wanted to head back down to West Green Loss because I'd seen their stand and it was gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Everything was laid out beautifully. All the colourways look so lovely. The stand was set up so nicely. Must be quite hard sort of doing these festivals now if you're an indie dyer because it's just not enough to have just beautiful yarn. You've got to have it laid out beautifully now. You've got to have all your branding looking good. You've got to have, I don't know, the stools, so many of them look so enticing now. So much work and effort put into it. It's amazing, it really is. But anyway, this is one where the another one where the standard was really high. So I had seen this. There's another one that I'd seen, it was more pink. And when I went back it was gone. See? So was I wise to wait? But they did have this one, which I really liked. So I got this. So this one is again 7525 superwash merino nylon and the colour is Jane Bennett. Now I looked at this and I, when I got it back to the hotel I thought you know that does look very familiar and it's not just because I went away and came back I think Sam's got this. So I asked her when I came back home and yeah Sam got this one when we went to Piper East last summer. <laughs> so I obviously liked it and that had stayed with me. So that one's nice. And then I had seen on my first time round this project bag. Look at that, isn't it stunning? Close up to show you. So this, look at that, isn't it beautiful? Oh my God. So this is a hand woven bag. So I don't know your name, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, the same person that wove the, uh, dyed those beautiful yarns also wove this utterly stunning bag, or the material for it, and made it into a project bag. I love the blue. I love the brightness of the blue. I love these sort of colours drizzling down. Almost looks like sort of paint thrown at the wall and falling down. And just the fact there's some subtle little colours in there as well. Beautiful. So I had to have this too. Oh, so pleased to get it. <laughs> I was almost half thinking it won't be there when I go back and then I'll be too sad. Got a little label on the end. And she's got a nice uh, printed thing on the inside. Oh, this is so nice. It's a nice big size as well. I've been needing sort of project bag that's in a bit bigger size. And as you can see, this one's gonna fit loads in. Plenty big enough. So I'm looking forward to using that now I've shown you because I am so in love with that. And I also picked up, <laughs> this was a bit of an impulse, just as I was standing there 
going over to pay. I suddenly saw this and thought, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so this is a double knit weight yarn. And it just reminds me of, what are you doing? You can't get on the desk, what are you up to? So it's called, it's called Urban Glitter. 75%, 25% again. But it reminds me of sort of like a garden, a beautiful summery floral garden. But I do like the name Urban Glitter, it's a great name. Yeah. So that was just too pretty not to get basically. No idea what it shall become. And then last of all, oh no, not last of all, there's something else after this. Um, <laughs> was this one. So this is by Olan, which I hadn't heard of before. I think they're based in Ireland, yeah, olan.ie. Um, and it's their sock light yarn. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I saw this about three times. I kind of clocked it and I liked it and I walked away. You mind? You're being very noisy. But in the end I just had to go back and get it because it's just so beautiful. Just so beautiful. Oh, look at the way that kind of orange is in there white fiery orange and the soft pink oh and that flash of teal love it so that would probably be socks as well can't wait to see what that knits up like oh i want to cast it on now very exciting and then we went back on the sunday as well just briefly for a little while and i ended up getting Oh, I didn't tell you my little bits I got. So incoherent today. So I went to this store and I got just some little stitch markers the other day. It's quite stiff this tin. Bear with. The other day I was knitting something and I thought, I have got quite a lot of stitch markers, but I just wanted some nice, simple, plain ones. No, no, they're not edible. You can't eat them. So they're just these little, <laughs> just these little copper hearts. You're never going to see that, are you? Can you see that? Sort of. I thought if I showed you in here it'd be easier. But it's really not. There you go. They're cute, aren't they? Oh. I would have some of those. And I also got myself a little pair of scissors. Which are these nice little square Art Deco numbers. I'll have to put... I mean, I'll put everything in show notes anyway, obviously, in case you want to have a little looky for yourself. I can't remember the name of this store, though. So I'll pop that in show notes. But they had quite a few nice little scissors on there. And I also went to Beaker Buttons. When we went to Stylecraft earlier in the month, uh, Juliet taught us how to make these little Dorset buttons, which I've seen before. Um, and hadn't really thought about, to be honest with you. But yeah, but she showed us how to make those. And I was quite taken with it, to be honest, because I just really liked the idea I've got a lot of buttons, but I've got a lot of mismatched buttons. So although I might have one that matches perfectly, I won't always have a sort of set. And I just kind of like the idea that you could always just make. You know, you'd always just be able to match your buttons, wouldn't you? You could even make them in exactly the same yarn or just choose a different colour yarn. And you'd always be able to have the perfect button for your project. I quite like the idea of that. So when I saw the big button stall, I thought I'd just get this little set. And you can't see very well, but there's five other different patterns on there. So the style of those stitches in the middle, you can vary slightly. But because it was quite a nice, quick and relaxing little make, I thought I'd just have a go at some of those other styles. I've got 
these rings are quite big but it's quite nice to have them big when you're starting I think so if I could get some smaller rings to make them a bit more of a button size that I would use I think that'd be quite good to be able to just whip up your own buttons um, yeah so anyway after that we went back on the Sunday and I just got another little extra purchase which was this cute basket this was actually from the Farnham Maltings shop rather than part of the festival so that was really cute and in it we got these infamous itchy balls that's the thing now people having your itchy balls <laughs> there was a stand and I shall pop it in Eliza Conway I think it is um, and she she had a lovely stand actually she had lots of um, sort of vintage and antique sort of bits and bobs knickknacks there was um, sort of crochet hooks and knitting needles and scissors and baskets and postcards and all kinds of little other things but she also had all of these wound up balls now this is the itchiest wool you would ever come across I mean you can see it's just hairy and spiky and there's no way, no way I would ever consider making anything to wear out of this because I just, I can't. I'm a little princess I'm afraid, eh? I'm a sensitive little princess and I can't stand the itchy. But they do make lovely sort of homeware things, sort of doilies and um, you know like pot holders and the sort of coasters and things but just mostly the balls look so nice so I might just kind of leave them piled up in one of my little basket things for a bit look at the, some of the colours are gorgeous though, look at that one quite like these, this series, sort of sea foamy pretty just sort of some really nice combinations in there Mm, look at the look at that coppery one as well. Sorry, it's hard to lift up my hand because I've got a dog head on it. Yeah, just nice, nice combos. Yes, they just look really pretty, and they're only fifty p. Fifty p a ball. Bargain. Love that colour. That's my favourite. Oh, it's a duck egg colour, what a huge surprise. So then the last thing I have to share with you is some lovely yarn from my friend Erin, who is Holland Handmade um, online. She's got a podcast and also an Etsy shop, which is Holland Handmade Co. I'll show you her card actually, because she says, is, is it okay if I send you um, a little bit of yarn? Um, and she sent me some for a giveaway as well. So that's her card. So it's Holland Handmade Co. She's put dot .com on there, but it's an Etsy shop, so you can find it on Etsy. So I thought, well, that'd be lovely. She'll just send me a couple of minis or something for a giveaway. That'll be fab. But it came, and I've got so much gorgeous stuff. So let me just show you. So this is the first one. And isn't that just stunning? It's like sprinkles and birthdays it's really like sprinkles actually it just reminds me of like cake sprinkles like birthday cake sprinkles what did she call it actually I'm not sure she's given this one the name shush dog but I love that that is beautiful it's another one I want to cast on immediately <laughs> beautiful beautiful socks I think that'll be among other things and she also sent me this one, which is a one of a kind. Oh, look at that. Look how well it comes up on the camera. So that's a beautifully tonal purple. And this, see, she dyes her solid colours in the way I love them best, which is just so it's not a flat colour. I mean, sometimes you want a flat colour and that's lovely, but I really, really enjoy this kind of semi-solid almost like a sort of stonewash type effect I suppose where you get darker and lighter patches it just looks so beautiful when it's worked up knitted or crocheted 
So these are really big skeins. They're both 115 grams, so you get 415 yards. It's an 80% merino, 20% nylon blend. So they'd be perfect for socks. That would make really nice heels and toes in there, actually, wouldn't it? But don't worry, I won't steal any. So this is going to be a beautiful giveaway yarn. Really pretty, I think. <laughs> no, no, I will. I will give it to you when I ever organise this giveaway that I keep talking about. I was thinking maybe we could have an along, like a make-along of some kind, a knitting and crochet along of some kind. Yeah. Perhaps I have to organise that for next time, get myself sorted out. Yeah. Anyway, so those two beautiful full skeins. So I certainly didn't expect anything more than that. And then she's popped in this stunning set. She made these for Valentine's Day. Oh, they're just so beautiful. She had these on her Instagram. Uh, she's Mama to Abigail on Instagram. I'll pop that down below. Just those colours are so pretty. Again, look at those beautiful, beautiful semi-solid tonal shades. Oh, it's stunning. And also this set as well, which is just it's a little bit more variegated. Sorry, I hope it's not crinkling too much. Aren't they stunning? Look at the colours on that end one there. If you can see it through the plastic. And this one here. Ah, oh, beautiful. She says she sent me some minis to pop in my blanket. That is so kind. That's so, so kind. I shall stop playing with them so they don't make noise. So I was thinking, I do want to put some in my blanket, but wouldn't they just make the nicest pair of scrappy socks as well? This set, and there's a couple of the thinkier purple ones from here as well, would blend in really beautifully with it. Beautiful scrappy socks. Yeah, so I might do that as well, if I've got enough left after making some Battenberg blanket squares. So thank you so, so much for that, Erin. It was so generous of you, and I was... I was blown away by how beautiful your yarn is. It was just so pretty. So do have a little pop along and have a look in our Etsy shop. Holland Handmade Co. Um, she's in America, by the way. And though she's called Holland Handmade. I see at first I thought, oh, she's from Holland. And then I started watching her podcast and thought, she sounds very American. Perhaps she used to live in America and now she lives in Holland. Turns out there's a place in America called Holland. <laughs> So she's actually in Michigan, so that's Holland in Michigan, so <laughs> now you know. Right, I think that's everything now. Well, actually, I feel like I'm missing stuff out, but I think this is quite long enough, so whatever else, we'll have to wait for another day now, I think. Um, but yes, thank you for sticking with me. I hope you're not too bored, Rigid, and um, I hope it's at least allowed you to have some nice downtime with a cup of tea and perhaps making something nice while you watch. That's what I like to do anyway. Yes, anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for trying me out if you've come here for the first time and if you'd like to like or subscribe to watch future episodes, that would be absolutely fab. And um, yeah, until next time, happy crafting and I'll see you then. Bye.